A differential factor of 20's project is its commitment to perform an integrated European Union wide impact assessment for the six different demos each one impacting on different issues with a high level of relevance depending on the region and in many cases also on the regulatory framework. You have to measure the performance of uh, potential performance of your project. That's the starting point. So uh, the difficult part is to de design uh, indicators that uh, are able to to give a quantitative measure, uh, not just technical, but economic one uh, to, to the project as well. In 20s, we have tried to define from the very beginning, which by the way was a very tough task, uh, some uh, key performance index of the different demonstrations and at several levels, some technical, some economical and so on. And I really appreciate that you say what you've said because that shows us that probably we have gone in the right direction when we have uh, tried to define that. During this year we have made a great progress in this demonstration. We have installed all the equipment that is necessary in the three clusters that compose the demonstration, which are Wene, Harkons and Tajo. We install all the UCC servers, the equipment in the control center, uh, the additional equipment that is necessary in the wind farms. And we have already done some preliminary tests on the, the voltage control demonstration, which are with some promising results, really. And we are waiting to finish that, and then we'll, we'll start with the active power control demonstration, which hopefully will be finalized by August or September. And we have uh, this year done um, a test where we try to deliver virtual inertia at um, the Faroe Islands, which is uh, a small island with 50,000 uh, people, electrically isolated, but with a lot of wind power. And they have the problem that if a power plant uh, collapses, the uh, speed of what the uh, frequency will drop is very fast. So they need more nurture, and that we can deliver by shedding uh, loads on the Faroe Islands, primarily in the fishing industry. That's one of the solutions. Another solution we will show is uh, local reactive uh, power control. So um, in the future, uh, there will be a problem to deliver uh, reactive power uh, when the uh, thermal power plants for some hours do not run because the wind power is uh, producing all the power that's needed in the system. But you cannot transport the reactive power from uh, the offshore wind parks into the uh, city areas where it's uh, needed. So that's another way you can uh, use the uh, virtual power plants. A third uh, thing we have uh, achieved this year is uh, we've integrated the virtual power plant with the electrical vehicle operator Better Place in Denmark where the power plant uh, optimizes the load schedules of the electrical vehicle. So when the vehicles has to be charged, and there you again uh, gain some flexibility to the electrical system. This is demo three, and really this is concerned with all aspects of DC transmission, offshore DC transmission. And we've done a number of uh, studies within, uh, within Demo3. One of them is an economic analysis of different network configurations, different network topologies to connect offshore wind to shore, but also to uh, interconnect different regions. Of course, we need to look at it from an economic standpoint, but also there are some technological developments which uh, we have also been considering. Uh, one of those is associated with the control of DC networks so that we can provide not only getting power to shore but also providing ancillary services to the, to the network as a whole. Connected with that is the aspect of uh, protection. In DC we don't uh, have today uh, operational DC circuit breakers. So a critical element of, of Demo 3. 
is to demonstrate the effectiveness of a DC circuit breaker at the voltage and current levels that we could expect on this kind of offshore transmission grid. So this year, really, the important milestones have been uh, the complete report, uh, which we've delivered on the protections uh, of the system, and also the economic analysis. Uh, towards the end of this year, we will be able to demonstrate the uh, DC circuit breaker, and that will be a, a, a big milestone for, for the project. During the past year, the, the DEMO 4 has achieved to uh, start implementing the uh, new storm controller at this uh, Hornsrev 2 park, and we expect that to be implemented soon. Uh, we have also established a lot of data and this data is uh, collected for the storm that has been and will be collected for the new storms to come where we have the new controller implemented. We have also been working a lot on the system impacts of the storms which is going to be the, uh, the basis for the deliverable that we are going to write soon. During the second year of the project, we installed a 24-hour forecast of the opacity of the lines. And at the moment, we are developing a 44 hours, 48 hours um, forecast as well. Um, we also installed a WAM system for monitoring the stability of the system using PMUs. And we are now able to link uh, the flows on some overhead lines with the stability of the system. Uh, finally, we implemented an algorithm to coordinate the phase shifters. Uh, today, the TSOs are already coordinating the use of phase shifters. Uh, they have a procedure to do so, and we expect to improve these procedures uh, with the algorithm we are developing. We have already been chosen the monitoring system. We are going to use a distributing temperature sensing, which is going to let us to monitorize the, the conductor, the temperature conductor, along a fiber optic install install uh, inside the an, an, opt an optical phase conductor. So um, all the, the tests have been carried out. The the devices have been have been manufactured, and the line right now is uh, the construction of the line is on time and commissioning is expected on in November and another important issue is that we have already chosen the, the location in which we are going to, to install the monitoring system it is going to be Zaragoza because it's a, a place with a great wind production capacity more or less 1700 megawatts and we have developed a detailed wind analysis in which we have, determ we have determined uh, the relationship between the load of the, of the line and the wind production of the area in which we are going to install the monitoring system. As a result of that uh, inform is that uh, at least 27% of the total wind production of this area will be evacuated through the line. Uh, it is more than the 50% of the static, static uh, transmission capacity of the line. And uh, finally, uh, there are two activities that are ongoing, and uh, they are the development of new algorithms for transmission capacity uh, calculations, and of course, new development of algorithms to perform correlations between the behavior, the thermal behavior of the line and uh, the wind production of, of the area. We expect to, to have the, the first results in the first quarter of 2013. The main progress of this year in the, within this project uh, has been to develop the, the new control modes that has been um, that have been uh, defined for different controls more modes have been uh, defined with an emergency extra control mode these controls modes modes will be uh, tested in an rtds uh, lab setup this uh, june and the next uh, step will be to uh, install the device at the substation 
the substation was uh, already selected and it's a uh, Magallon substation in Aragon and it's going to be installed close by to the RTTR the the other project of the of the demo so the influence could be also evaluated First of all the the provision of ancillary services by wind farms have a direct effect both in the active power and in the reactive power. We've been adapting our decision support models to provide some sensible results and we've been able to obtain preliminary results. Regarding the other demos, we, are, we have been supervising the, 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 how the BPPs can also have a direct impact on the global cost of the system, avoiding the use of, of other technologies. Regarding the, the, the offshore issue, all the studies that are being pre were presented yesterday by Strathclyde are part of what is going to be extended in the last part of the year. And the storm control, basically, their developments have been on the definition of the wind scenarios of offshore generation that will be necessary to, us to make the final assessment. Finally, regarding the network uh, flexibility issues, uh, the ELIAS demonstration that involves all the countries in the Central Western Europe area have been the definition of how the NTC, I mean the net transfer capabilities, can be improved thanks to this network flexibility control and within some models they are able, in the EDF, able and we, they have started obtaining results on how this extra capacity can be uh, translated into extra wind that can be produced and something similar for the demonstration in, the, in Red Electrica, which is the last part of our assessment. Uh, we have obtained some figures on how much we are uh, able to have extra wind thanks to the intelligent uh, uh, operation of the current lines. In the first demo we have been working with the uh, upscaling of the of the ancillary services from, from wind power. Another aspect uh, is uh, if we are uh, allowing uh, to have ancillary services from uh, from wind power. This is also uh, uh, going to mean that we would spill some wind power because we are down-regulating wind power to provide the, the reserves. And of course, this is also a matter of political uh, acceptance. But actually, uh, also the studies that EDF has per performed in in the in the work here has shown that uh, there is. Uh, a benefit from the overall system. We have also looked at uh, the task force two, which is about offshore. We have uh, built a scenario for wind power, uh, offshore wind power development, uh, which will make it possible for us. And we are uh, to simulate the, the variations in, in the wind power. And we have special focus on the variations uh, that we have and the sudden loss of power we have when we have storm fronts coming in. And finally, we are looking at uh, uh, the uh, upscaling of, uh, of the of more flexible use of, of the, of the net, existing network capacity because it is uh, very difficult to, to uh, and it is long, long, takes long time to build new transmission lines. It's important to utilize the, the existing lines to, to the maximum. So this is something also that we are we are looking at, uh, at, at the European uh, uh, level. We are working on, um, on, on uh, optimizing the planning and permitting of, uh, of offshore interconnectors. Um, last year we have uh, been working uh, on, uh, on three results areas actually in this uh, work package. Uh, one was uh, uh, to, um, to, to analyze uh, recent offshore pro projects for interconnectors. What we see is that there are large uh, risk for, for timeline overruns. Um, uh, that depends highly on uh, yeah, a lack of consent uh, with the authorities. Um, of these highly complex projects um, and uh, also the transnational coordination uh, between member states is also an important risk factor for, for a timely planning and permitting uh, of, uh, of interconnector projects. Another issue uh, or another risk factor for, uh, for, for, the, for uh, offshore interconnector projects is, uh, is budget. Uh, 
Um, what we see is that uh, many interconnector projects are facing uh, budget overruns because uh, discussions of, of, uh, of the routing. Last but not least, uh, surprisingly, we found also that uh, the internal project organization turns also out to be a key factor for uh, the planning and permitting of, uh, of interconnector projects. And based on these findings, we defined follow-up actions for, for, for what we are taking care of, of now. And uh, that is that we are now developing a virtual project case uh, called Trifid. Um, and that is an interconnector project with multiple landing points. So it's not a two-leg interconnector, a cross-border two-leg, but it's a three-leg interconnector project. Uh, in this case, we investigate on uh, a, a project between Netherlands, Denmark and Germany. After two years of the project, we are in the key point where almost all the work related with the preparation of the different demos has been complete. Uh, the hardware in most of the cases are uh, implemented and now we need to launch the real demo test during the, the next six months in order to be able to complete the project on time and having time enough to make the proper assessment of the results. We hope to complete the project on time and achieve the expected good results that we thought in the initial stage of the project. This is an important project because it will help renewables to grow substantially in Europe because of climate change, um, because of the need for a zero emissions electricity system, um, being able to control and being able to balance the maximum amount of renewables on electricity systems uh, is crucial for the future. Uh, and what's a, 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 an extra benefit of this project is people working together from many different countries, so eventually the results can be deployed across the whole of Europe. My impression is this is a very important uh, project. I, I feel that the merge between uh, different people coming from different countries is really brings really value added to the project. And uh, the the issues that are, are analyzed by the different demos are going to be at the core of the European energy policy in the years to come. So I'm really impressed. And there are so many issues from the regulatory point of view that must be faced that uh, it's, re it's really challenging. It's very nice to see a lot of people working for the same aim with enthusiasm.